Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Today's first reading, taken from the Old Testament, first book of Kings, we hear the, the Lord appear in a dream and say to King Solomon, the son of David, the Lord said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. First Kings 3 verse 5. Solomon recognizes that God has put him as, in an important position as king over the chosen people. And so he asks for an understanding heart. Uh, literally in Hebrew, it's a listening heart is how it translates. He asks for a heart that is teachable and open to the Lord's guidance so that he can know right from wrong and so that he can guide the nation of Israel in a just way. Traditionally, we say that Solomon asked for wisdom. That's how Second Chronicles 1 verse 10 renders a listening heart. Uh, Solomon asks for wisdom and knowledge to be able to do what's right in God's sight. The Lord was very pleased with the king's request, so much so that he gave Solomon what he asked for, and, which was wisdom, but he also gave him all the other things that someone in power typically desires, riches, glory, fame, longevity, a long life. He gave him all those gifts. Typically, the spiritual writers will tell us that the prayers of supplication, which God is more surely to answer, are the prayers that we ask him for our own spiritual improvement uh, or well-being. Above all else, our spiritual improvement. We can certainly pray for physical health or for material needs or desires that we have. We can pray and ask for those things, but God may or may not answer those prayers. Uh, if it's not according to his plan for us, if it's not according to his will, then it would be, would be bad for us, for him to actually grant us some of those things. But praying to be and to become a more faithful follower of our Lord, praying for virtue, praying as Solomon did for understanding, for an understanding mind, praying for a listening heart, uh, the Lord will grant those requests because those requests bring us closer to him and they make us reflect his character more and more. Of course, the gift that God gives us can also, the gifts that he gives to us can also be abused as well. Solomon himself received the gift of wisdom, but he did eventually abuse that gift. He took hundreds of wives uh, for himself. He allowed altars to false gods to be erected in Israel, certainly in part to please the foreign wives which he had acquired. So whatever spiritual gift the Lord gives us, we have to make sure that we use it wisely as well, that we use it to bring us closer to the Lord and that we use it for his glory and also for the edification of others. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, he says, to each one of us is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, meaning that the gifts the Holy Spirit gives to us, the certain talents, the gifts that he gives are for the benefit of the whole church for the benefit of everyone. So even if we ask for a spiritual gift for ourselves, even with the best intentions, we have to remember that, that it's also uh, for the whole church as well. But we also have to be vigilant and constantly renew our commitment to put the gifts of the Lord to good use. We have to be vigilant about that. It's not a guarantee. Speaking of King Solomon, uh, we just close with one brief, brief reflection on him. We know that the Old Testament book, the Song of Songs, is traditionally attributed to him, and it basically describes Solomon's pursuit of romantic love, his pursuit of a bride uh, with which he desired to share his whole life and to whom he wanted to completely dedicate himself to. The Song of Songs is basically a romantic love poem, and someone may ask, well, what's that doing in the Bible of all places. Uh, commentators throughout the centuries have told us that the Song of Songs really is a metaphor of God's love for the soul. Uh, God is the bridegroom in the psalm, and he is in desperate search of his bride. He's in desperate search of his bride, which is the church, but also his bride, which is each and every soul, which is each and every one of us. Saint Therese knew this. She understood this. She herself had the gift of an understanding mind. She had the gift of a listening heart. She knew that God was in pursuit of her and she responded to his pursuit by loving him with all her heart, with all her soul, 
with all her strength, with all her mind, just as Jesus tells us to do in Luke 10, verse 27. God wants us to see life uh, from that optic, from this optic, uh, that basically he is in pursuit of us uh, and he wants us to respond to his pursuit. Even in romantic movies, for example, uh, everything in the story, you ever watch a romantic movie, probably most of you have, everything in the story revolves around the relationship uh, between the couple who are in love and who are committed to each other. That's how God himself, that's how the Lord wants us to see our lives as well. At the center of our lives should be our relationship with the Lord. It should be our commitment to him. Everything should revolve around that should revolve around our relationship. We, in a certain sense, are the co-star of God's movie, and he is the star, he is the one who's in pursuit of us. Uh, So let's ask the Lord, and let's ask Our Lady today for the grace to have an understanding mind, for the grace to have a listening heart so that we can carefully, that we can fully live out the role that God has given us in his story of romance, just like St. Therese perfectly lived out her role during her life. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.